Now, don't get me wrong, I love Algonquin Park. I've been here many times with friends, and I think that's how I prefer it. It's, it's a social thing for me. Ooh, something, oh. Something was following it and actually got my worm. It wasn't anything big. I would take just about anything right now, but I'm gonna stay here and fish this spot a little bit. Because the, this bank right here, that embankment is really steep, which means it's a really steep drop right here. And uh, I'm just letting that spoon sink down. It's probably rocky. Try and keep more of that worm on the hook. So if something goes for it, it takes the hook too. The breeze, although, is welcome because of the bugs. This keeps pushing me away from the spot where I want to fish. I could go make an anchor out of a rock, but I'm already out on the water. Oh, that's a nice breeze. Yeah, buddy. Okay, one more cast with this spoon, and then I'm gonna tie something onto my ultralight, see if I can just catch some small fish. Just need something right now. Oh, that was atrocious, but we're gonna go with it. I keep thinking to myself how many how many times I brought my lure past a fish and he was just like, yeah, freaking right, bud. Who do you think I am? So in lieu of that, I'm gonna use lighter line. Maybe if that five of diamonds spoon was on lighter line, it would have looked more like a five, five of diamonds fish and they would have bit it. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do right just yet. I'll probably tie on just a little spinner, inline spinner. I just tied on a new leader on my ultralight. And I'm gonna throw this little silver inline spinner, Panther Martin number four, with some black hair on it. No particular reason, just because I think it'll give me a shot at catching at least a smaller fish. Well, my plan is, is to just cast to all this timber along the bank here. Try and bring it as parallel as possible. A few tiny little fish follow it. If that happens again, I might put a worm on it. Oh, it's hot out here. It's quarter to four. I'm gonna say I'm gonna pack it in at four o'clock. Probably a log though. Ooh! <laughs> Little fish came at it right, right beside the boat there. <clears throat> Looks like my sleeping quarters is actually shaded now, so if I did need to go in there and get away from the bugs, at least it won't be roasting. this tarp up over my bed. I did this today because I took a nap in the middle of the day and the sun was blazing hot. 
it was right above and I didn't want to cook inside that little uh, that little hammock there and I did anyways by the time the sun was right right above my my shirt was hot to the touch it was friggin hot in there well I gotta check my water not boiled yet So for dinner, we're having some Knorr side dish, chicken flavor, whatever that means. Check that out. I mean, that's a pot hook if I've ever seen one. That should be boiled up pretty soon. This jerky's so dry, it just makes me thirsty. I gotta be completely honest, I'm really looking forward to getting to my car tomorrow and heading home. I miss my family and although this has been a challenging experience, um, you know, if I'm to reflect on it right now while I'm here doing it, I can't say that I would do this again. It's just too much work when really my priority is fishing to come all the way out here and do all this just to catch fish and not, you know, not even have good luck. I got a pretty long paddle out of here tomorrow between 12 and 15 kilometers, something like that. And uh, for a portion of it, I'll be paddling upstream. So it'll be challenging, but I plan to get on the water real early, um, like around five. That'll put me back in my car, hopefully by lunchtime, maybe one o'clock. And then I'll have a, about a three and a half to four hour drive home. Oh, that's cool looking. Okay, so I'm just kind of packing stuff as I was waiting for my dinner to cook. It's ready now. So I'm just going to finish putting stuff away that I'm not going to need. That includes this camera on this tripod. So I'm not going to do any more filming with this. Maybe tomorrow if I see something worth filming or taking a picture of, I'll do that. But uh, I want to get everything packed up so that tomorrow I just pack up my bed and, uh, and then I'm on the water. That's the plan. I'm going to eat breakfast as I'm going. I got almonds and jerky and protein bars, all that stuff. Um, it'll be ready to go for me to eat in the morning. So um, I'll check back in with you. I'm going to go to bed shortly after dinner. Um, even though it's light, I'm going to get up so early in the morning. And to be honest, I don't want to hang out here doing nothing with the bugs. You probably won't see me until tomorrow morning, uh, if that's the case. Good night to me, and we'll see you then. Good morning. I got everything packed up. Boat's just about ready to go. Just gotta load my backpack on, and then we are out of here. Almost five o'clock on the dot. It'll be perfect. It is beautiful out on the water. Nice and cool, which is amazing. And uh, the water is dead calm. You grab my map. Perfect. So, I made it. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, there are a lot of ups and downs, but a lot more downs this weekend. I just felt a lot like all this work wasn't worth coming out here to fish if it was just a camping trip and that might be different but I brought a lot of stuff with me specifically to fish I mean I fished a lot but I didn't catch anything and I mean that happens it's to be expected just based on that my my thoughts are not worth it um, now, as to the question of why I did this, 
Well, <clears throat> I feel like I've overcome quite a bit. There were many times where I felt like I just wanted to go, I just wanted to leave, thinking about how far I have to go to get back to the car. But I stayed and I got through it. So I guess to answer the question why is to push myself and to learn a little bit about myself and what I'm capable of. And now I think I know. I also think I know what I do and I don't like as far as planning solo fishing trips goes. Now don't get me wrong, I love Algonquin Park. I've been here many times with friends and I think that's how I prefer it. It's, it's a social thing for me. I enjoy being with people and sharing this experience and although I'm sharing it with anyone who's watching this video, you know, it may seem like I have someone to talk to when I'm talking to the camera, but the truth is I don't do that that often. There's a lot of time between filming that I'm doing other things or um, I actually like just laid down in my bed quite a bit this weekend um, and didn't film anything. So I definitely prefer to be here with people. Anyways, I'm gonna keep paddling. I got probably about five hours to go at least. So we're gonna push on. Just on my way across Rosebury now. There's no wind at all, which is great. It's just a big old lake. Then I'll be in the Tim River for a little while. I say a little while, like two and a half hours. <laughs> but we're going, I'm, I'm thinking right before I get back into the Tim, I might uh, have my little snack, get some food into me. I haven't eaten anything yet. Time for breakfast. I'm melted, then rehardened protein bar. Mmm. This thing is so chewy. It's like a jaw workout. Mm. Maybe I'll turn it around so you see the sun rise. It's gorgeous. She's a beaut. This is where I saw those two moose yesterday. That campsite's just off to my right. Or yesterday, on Friday. Weekend's one big blur. I just finished Rosebury. It's quarter to six now. I took about 45 minutes, which I think is about 10 minutes longer than what my map said it should take. And quite frankly, I attribute that to this boat. This is not the intended use for this boat at all. <laughs> it's not built for speed, it's built for stability which I'm grateful for when I'm carrying 300 pounds with me and my gear. But she moves slow and it's a workout to get her going. Okay, I gotta fight this current here. Just on little butt now, or a little butte, or butte, or whatever it is. Just getting some water. It's getting hot already. I'm sweating, so I want to make sure I drink a lot. Okay, so I'm coming up to my first actual obstacle, which would be a dam that I'm going to have to get out of my boat. problem is I don't know how stable these dams are Ugh. but I guess we're gonna find out should I just jump <laughs> Yeah, right, you see that little fish just jumped there? As I said, the word jump. Cute. Okay. Oh, we did it. You and me. We did it together, couldn't have done it without you. That was sketchy. Okay, those suck. And I think I got at least two, maybe three more of those. 
Hey, it's time to wake up. Beaver in the water. Oh. <laughs> gotcha, buddy. I'm gonna make one cast, just one. Some lilies around here, I see some structure, so who knows? There's a little dam on the left side of the river. It's coming up here. I think I'm gonna cast at it. I'd love to catch one more fish before I go. Okay, coming up to my second dam here. This one, it seems like I can just go over it, but getting my boat up it will be the challenge Ugh. okay I feel like I should have a rope or something to pull the boat up it's a pretty good damn beaver pretty good damn Okay, we want to avoid that. <sighs> okay, dam number two down. <sighs> okay, hey. Got a perch. I'll take it. I know, bud. I know. I'm almost done. You want to go? There we go. Look at that. Perch. Yeah, baby. Never been so happy to catch a perch. <laughs> And I'm at another dam. This, I'm pretty sure this is the last dam. Hope it goes as smooth as the other ones. I don't think I'm too much further from the, the portage. <clears throat> I would check my map, but I just want to go. But I'm pretty sure I remember that dam being not far after. So we'll see. Another dam? What the hell is this? No, there's not supposed to be any more. God damn. This one doesn't look like it's as easy to get over either. Just a little sketchy. This would be a hell of a lot easier if it wasn't 60 pounds of gear in this friggin' boat. Oh yeah, plus the 60 pounds of boat weighs. Yeah. I think we're good to go. Yeah. Now I think we're close to the portage. 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 Portage, portage, portage. Going crazy. Going crazy! 
Okay, so I finally made it to the portage. Oh, look at that crane. That's cool. This is going to be real exciting getting the boat up here. Thankfully, it's just a short hill, but she's steep. I'm feeling pretty hungry, so I might actually have a little snack on my way back to the boat. Good old piece of flatbread. Okay, just got in the water. Finished that portage. Uh, going up that hill was friggin' brutal. But that's the last time I'll have to get out of my boat until I get to my car. So I just ran into a few guys <clears throat> who were here, here for the weekend as well. They stayed on Rosebury. Good news is they said they didn't have much luck fishing either. So, either we're all just horrible fishermen, which I very well could be, I don't know about them, or the fish just weren't biting. Either way, cut a brookie, got my first one, and my first Algonquin perch. <laughs> the sad thing is the perch was bigger than the brookie. <clears throat> Probably another hour and a half left to go. It's nine o'clock, been paddling for four hours. Sure feels like it. So, <laughs> I just corrected. I made a bit of a, not so much a wrong turn as went into a dead end. Um, there was a big S curve in the river and I didn't notice. So I just kept paddling forward and I just ended up in this dead end bay. But I'm back on track now. I think that put me about 20 minutes out of my way, which sucks, but it's not that big of a deal. So I think we're just about getting into Tim Lake now. And uh, if I was to guess, probably about an hour left, maybe just over to get back to the car. I might get some water here in Tim Lake because uh, I think I'm just about out. I'm probably only 15 minutes out now from the car. Tell you what, I can't wait to get, oh, I don't know, do I want a Big Mac or a Baconator? Ah, uh, to be honest, whichever one comes first. My wife is probably freaking out right now because she's expecting me to call her when I get service and it's quarter after 10 and she hasn't heard from me yet. So I'm sure she's feeling anxious, but soon enough she'll hear from me. Okay, I made it back. Some people at the ramp. I'm still too embarrassed to do this in front of people, so <clears throat> I will catch up with you guys in the car once everything's packed up. All right, got the car all packed up. On my way home now. Just gotta wait till I get reception so I can call my wife, look at her and my kids, see how everyone's doing. But that was it. Three days, two nights in Algonquin by myself. First time doing a solo trip like this. Definitely way out of my comfort zone, but I learned a lot, and I'll never forget. Hope you all enjoyed watching, we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.